This is WordPress development for non-developers. So we're taking a brief look at the underbelly of WordPress and kind of get an idea about how it works. And I'm first we get an idea of how the computer works. Okay. A little bit about me. Uh, I used to have longer hair, but I re didn't redo the graphic because I don't remember how I did that. So <laughs> this is like <laughs> my old self with the longer hair. Um, my name's Jessica Gardner. I am currently from Kent, Ohio. I teach uh, web development and information technology classes at Kent State University. And you may or may not know, Kent State University is, has a claim to fame with a connection to Canada. And that is that we are home to millions of black squirrels who were uh, brought down brought by our landscaper, or the, the uh, campus groundskeeper, sometime in the 20s. And now black squirrels are the unofficial mascot of Kent, Kent State University. I um, run a company called Bitworks with my husband. I do what I call website building. So I don't quite consider myself to be a developer yet. Um, I've been using WordPress for about two years and what I do with it is sort of in the role of a contractor. I work with people to find out what they need a website to do and I find the different parts of WordPress that'll do it and I put them together. So I'm kind of like the middleman and that's one of the things I really love about WordPress is that I have not yet been unable to solve a problem or make a website solution using WordPress because of all of the amazing development that happens um, in the community. I also teach yoga. That's just something about me, a little background. I would like to get a little information about you guys. So first off, who here has experienced the five-minute install firsthand? Like who's actually sat down and gone through that experience? Great. Um, Windows users? Mac users? Wow, like 50-50. Other? Both. Well, okay, we'll do both. And then what about neither? <laughs> Linux only, yeah. <laughs> okay, hardcore people. Um, who here has heard of HTML? Who's hand coded in HTML? Great. Yes! <laughs> uh, CSS. Who's heard of CSS? Who's done hand coding with CSS? All right. PHP? Heard of it? Coded in it. Okay, why are you guys here? <laughs> Uh, I hope I hope I have something new to tell you, but um, all right, so that's great. Um, anyone want to just shout out what is there? What what's something you wish that you could do with WordPress that you haven't figured out how to do yet? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, to actually develop the responsive theme from start to finish. To build your own theme. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Good. So this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speed. Speed. All right. Other sessions for security and speed. <laughs> Definitely. I think there are some coming up. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, what we're going to do here is um, really, it's going to be sort of an overview. We'll touch on a few of these different things that you guys have men mentioned. But it's really an overview of how WordPress works, like if you're going in the back door. So let's see if, if some of this gets addressed. So this is a WordPress website. Very basic right now. Um, pretty little test site. 
And if you look at this in a browser, and I have a lot of code examples. I made some of them big, but some of them you're not going to be able to see. So um, you want to take a look at the SlideShare presentation afterwards, or <coughs> I'll read it. I'll read the code to you <laughs> if anyone is ready for a nap. <laughs> um, all right, so you look at this in a browser, and you view the source code. And this is what it looks like, and I bet nobody can read that. But um, I have some bigger coming up. So I'll tell you what it is. It's a bunch of HTML. All right, you've got a bunch of div elements, header elements, article tags, CSS class is being called. We'll make it bigger. And this is just the code for the menu, the navigation menu. So it looks a lot like HTML, which it is. However, if you look at the page in the back end of WordPress that is producing this, it looks like this. Um, teeny little bits of HTML here, but for the most part, we've got, you know, PHP, if have posts, PHP is home. So it's a bunch of PHP here. There, there's, there's the loop. Start the loop here. So this is a PHP web page or a PHP file document. Jennifer, yes. Your code. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you. But, yeah. All right. So it's a bunch of PHP. This file is called index.php. And just FYI, the um, theme that I'm using for this example is 2016. I knew it would be trustworthy, solid. Yeah? It says there are classes 2016. Can I download this somewhere? 2016? Stop classes 2016. Happy to work Yeah, this is the 2016 theme put out by Automatic. So can we get it somewhere? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, from the theme directory. Yeah, or inside your WordPress install if you add new themes. Yeah, I think it. It's a new theme, but I don't know if it's, yeah. Do you mind if we ask questions? No. So when the theme is being added to the WordPress install, it's actually being added as a package, as a sub package. So I'm seeing the markup, the import. You know, uh huh. Right there. Um, well, let me show you where it goes. I don't know about um, package, sub package. Um, That's it, it has to do with importing libraries into the programming language. Okay. So, so that's, the, this is, that, by the way, is a kind of little light bulb moment. For yeah. I'm now understanding how it's being done. Okay. Yeah, that is a little beyond my development no knowledge. <laughs> um, so, but that's, yeah. It's, it's like importing a library. It's importing a given set, a given chunk of code that's been written elsewhere. Yes. That you're then calling within the framework Yes, that sounds accurate. All right, so a quick overview of how this happens. All right, so here's um, our friend on the computer, makes a request of a web server, which is where our WordPress website lives. That request goes to the PHP file, index.php, which then goes into a PHP processor who then goes to a MySQL database to find the content that's being requested inside the PHP file. MySQL returns the data back to the PHP processor, who then creates an HTML document, which goes back to the web server and is served back to the user. So this is, this is a process that we call um, dynamically created web pages, right? So when you make a request of a WordPress website, you're not getting a file that already exists. You're getting a file that's generated based on the query that you've just made. And that's what we mean when we say dynamic web page. Um, I'm sure you all know this, but just a side-by-side -side example, this is a pure HTML file. This is what happens when you apply CSS, right? So um, <coughs> our web pages are made up of HTML plus CSS to add styling, and then uh, PHP is what dynamically creates the content that is spit out through, that spits out the HTML and the CSS. All right, so let's go back to the example. 
page and look at how this page gets created by this index.php page. And again, you can't really see because it's too small, but I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna give you some hints. So up here at the top, we see something that says get header. All right, so just remember that. And then here's something that says start the loop. So this code here is what's known as the loop. And then down here at the very bottom, which I'm sure you can't see, it says get sidebar and it says get footer. So just remember, put those in the back of your head. So going back to our page, this area at the top is one file. This area here is another file. This here is another, and then there's a, a fourth at the bottom that I didn't highlight for this example. But this, all of this code right here that's generated is caused by a file called header.php. Everything that happens here in this side is coming from sidebar.php. And this section here is generated by the loop. All right, so we're gonna take a look at what it looks like on the web server when you install WordPress. Oh, and this, the, 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 these three elements create index.php. All right, so when I install WordPress on my web server and I go look at it through my FTP client or through cPanel, this is what I see. This is WordPress, like from the back, from the file structure. Of this whole list of things, if you're going to try your hand at altering, developing, editing, unless you know what you're doing and you want to get into some deep, dark development, you should not touch anything in this list except the contents of WP content, H dot HT access, index.php, and wpconfig.php. Everything else is the WordPress core, and there, unless you're doing something really special or something that you want to do or know what you're doing with, there's no reason to go in and mess around with the core. All right. So um, the, the, the place where you're going to be doing the most work if you're getting into development is going to be WP content. Here's what's inside that folder. Our plugins, our themes, your um, up, the files you upload, which is your media files, and then um, I've never gone into upgrade folder, so I don't think there's anything in there that applies to this talk anyway. All right, so we're gonna focus on what's inside a theme folder. So if we go from themes into your list of themes, this is the um, contents of the 2016 theme folder. So you see we have a CSS folder and a bunch of PHP files. So you can see, or I will tell you because it's probably too small to see, but you can, there is header.php, footer.php, index.php. And uh, this is an example of what wp-config looks like, just to give you kind of an overview of what's in there. Um, the only occasion I've had so far to touch it is um, if you want to turn on debugging. So if you're, working, if you're working in a development mode and you want to get your error messages instead of the white screen of death, um, you can turn debugging on by just changing this to true and then saving the file back up. If you are manually moving a site and you need to replace like your database password or something, that would happen in wp-config. But for the most part, um, I haven't had a lot of need to edit that file. So this probably looks familiar. This is the backend dashboard. Under appearance, if you go to editor, here are all of your theme files. The first, I'll tell you like a dirty secret. The first time I 
found these. This is my second WordPress installation. I was trying to, I was using a, you know, a, a pre-made premium theme, and I was trying to figure out how to change the color of some icon, and I discovered these files. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh I'm get, that's where the CSS is. I get it now. And I went in and I edited the CSS. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> um, I didn't break anything. Nothing bad happened, but it is, it is at the very best, it's not the best practice for editing theme files, and I'll tell you what that is. Um, but, but you can. I mean, all of your files are here. You could go in and delete style.css, click save, and it would be gone. So this is live and a dangerous, and um, you know, I don't even think it asks you, like, are you sure you want to do this? You just click update, and it's like, all right. So this is here. Um, but it's a dangerous place to be. But it's where you can look at all of these template files without having to go into the back end of your web server. I'm going to go over what a few of these files do, not all of them. Um, side note, good themes include lots of documentation. If you look at 2016 through the template files, through the PHP files, it tells you what's happening at each turn. So um, comments are great. If you ever build a theme, think about including comments for yourself, if not for other people who might use it in the future. Yes? Um, mm -hmm. In the content folder under themes, there's the theme files. Um, that's, or is that what the plugin files as well, as well, right? In WP content? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which file controls the widget? Which file controls? And widgets don't have a separate file. The widgets. Probably there. Yeah, aren't widgets just plugins? No. 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 Widgets no. are no. dynamically created content that are placed in sidebar, the sidebar areas. Okay. And other defined by So sidebar.php okay. is what's going to query the database for the contents of your widgets. And functions.php, that we're going to talk about briefly, determines where your widgets can happen. So functions.php is a theme file that includes, um, it, it, functions.php actually acts like a little plugin itself. So it contains things like uh, where widget areas are in your theme, it can <coughs> customize the admin panel, it can customize excerpt length. So um, it basically adds functionality to your theme. So it's a good place to start poking around if you want to experiment with development. And I'll just tell you my personal opinion. The best way to learn how to develop is to look at other people's work and then figure out what they're doing and maybe tweak something. You know, um, there's a lot of great resources on the web for learning code like PHP, but a lot of them will start you at the very beginning, and you learn how to do your Hello World script. And, and that's useful and good, but I, it works better for me to just kind of jump into the middle and figure it out from there. So um, functions.php. Style.css is going to be the main style sheet for the theme, and it contains metadata about the theme. So this is the... Uh, comment at the very top of the 2016 theme. It tells you the name, the author, the description, licensing, tags, etc. Um, CSS files are also a good place if you want to start messing around on your own inside WordPress. Like I said, that's that was the first thing I did was go in and start changing colors of um, icons and things. Okay, so this is functions.php, and um, this is where it's registering your widget areas. So 2016 comes with three sidebars built in. So um, one thing that I've done with another theme is added, uh, I've added widget areas to themes basically by um, just copying what was here, adding another one, and seeing if it worked. Again, we're not going to edit functions.php of the theme itself. Just remember that for later. Uh, 
All right. Next, there is usually a file along with your themes and your plugins and uh, other packages that you download called readme.txt. If a theme or a plugin is well developed and well built, it will have a nice informative readme.txt. So go ahead and read it. Um, <coughs> next, index.php in this theme is the generic template file. So along with style.css, that's the only required file to make a theme. So in order, if you're going to build a theme from scratch, the two themes, or the two files that you absolutely have to have are index.php and style.css. Not quite. Okay. So when you did the tree originally in terms of what files are content and within what uh, subdirectory, mm -hmm. in the uh, WP content directory, mm -hmm. yeah. you had an index PHP. Then when you go into uh, content subdirectory, uh -huh. there's an index PHP. And then when right. you go into themes, there's an index PHP. Those are, so this is an interesting point that if when I tell you it's going to seem very basic, um, but when I had it, it was kind of like, whoa. All of your WordPress installation is a website, right? The back end, the dashboard are web pages. They're forms where you're putting in data. You have index pages for parts of the other parts of the site, too. So you have an index page for your dashboard. You have an index page for your plugin section. Does that make sense? Well, there's multiple index pages, but that page down a selection page. Um, I don't. Mm -hmm. That starts it all off, and that then calls the other index right. PHP as required. Okay. So it's it's yeah. the first one at the root directory that's the most important one to get the ball rolling. Well, this uh, so this index.php is the index page, the home page for your website. That's right. The dashboard has a home page. That's right. And it's in a different location. It's in a different folder. And the way it's brought up is, is different. So but, but you'll see that if you go to any WordPress site, you'll go and see uh, uh, three uh, subdirectories, WP content, WP admin, mm -hmm. WP uh, include. Mm -hmm. Those all have index.php files <coughs> scattered among them. Mm -hmm. But the index.php file that's immediately below in the core directory is the one that starts the whole ball game. Yes. That's all I need. Yeah. That's the one that a user is going to see when they that's go right. to the root of your web directory. That's right. When they, right. Uh, they uh, uh, initialize your site, that's the file that starts the, sh the show. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's at the top, and it calls the other one. Uh, uh, if you, uh, I can't do it here. Uh, it, like for example, on my, uh, I, I'm looking at a a, a a WordPress theme right now, mm -hmm. and if I do Control U, I can see uh, the uh, index file, and it's very simple, mm -hmm. and it's. Mm -hmm. And that starts off the whole process. 
See, I think what happens is inside the theme folder is index.php. But when you look in the root of your web folder, you're going to see index.php. And those are the same. I think that, well, not, so in, so this, in, the one that's inside the theme folder only gets called if there's not another query okay. being so called. So as long as, if I did install a theme and I went to that uh, URL, the index.php that, that is in WP content or above is what's like the call. I, I don't know that. Let's, let's, yeah. Oh, I'll get to that next. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's come back to this index.php, index.php, index.php question at the end if there's time, but I, let's uh, move forward. So the loop um, is contained in this case, so this isn't, um, what I'm saying about this, this is specific to 2016. This isn't going to happen in every single theme. In 2016, in index.php contains code which is called the loop. All right. And the loop is PHP code that displays your posts. All right. So um, it, we notice here, so it says, because it's well commented, start the loop. And then it says, if there are posts, display the posts. And then it uses a template file called content to tell WordPress what parts of the posts to display. Sometimes that will actually be in the loop code, but this loop uses, pulls in, um, pulls in another file called content, which looks like this. And again, I'm sure you probably can't read this, but um, I'll tell you what it has here. It says, it has information about if the post is sticky to do something to it, tells it to display the excerpt, to bring in the thumbnail, bring in the content, um, what to put before and after it, and um, information like that. So that's where the actual content of your page is being pulled from. In this case, is from template parts content.php, which the loop is then calling up. So we're going to do a quick little treasure hunt and figure out how the navigation menu is being displayed. All right. So this is header.php. Um, we know that the navigation menu is part of the header. So we're going to look at header.php and note that um, there's a section here that says, uh, div ID equals site header menu. So there's a little, we're, we're seeing some CSS being called and uh, HTML. And then this section about this, this PHP code that says if there's a, a menu called primary menu to bring the menu in. All right. So what we know from looking at this is that there is some CSS element called site header menu that has something to do with how our menu is being displayed. So if we look at our CSS file, style.css, again, a very nicely well-documented CSS file, we see that there is an entire section called navigation. And that section 6.2 tells us how the menus are styled. So if we look at section 6.2, then we see, oh, here's that class called site header menu. And uh, declarations for how it should be displayed. So if you wanted to change how your menu is being displayed, um, some themes will build this in in a nice <coughs> front-end editor, but if you, A, don't have a theme that does that, or B, want to just try doing it on your own, um, this is where you would change your navigation colors or layout. Yep. Yes. 
So that's why we wouldn't do it on the actual theme files. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But quickly, I want to ask where the actual data comes from, where the actual content of the menus is coming from. So as we mentioned earlier, all of our data is stored in a MySQL database. This is what your database looks like. This is all of the content of your WordPress installation. And I just want to mention an aside here uh, regarding plugins and your database. When you install a plugin, it will add data to your database. When you delete that plugin, sometimes it won't take that data with it. So, um, for example, I have. Uh, the, the, the site that I'm using for this is a test site where I play around and I had installed WooCommerce and then deleted it and these tables are still here. So um, it can be a good practice for you with site maintenance to periodically do database cleanup. Know that um, doing something like that directly in PHP MyAdmin, which is how we're accessing the database, is probably even more dangerous than messing around in the visual in the editor inside the dashboard. Like this is the content of your site and you could easily check all and delete. Again, this is live and there aren't um, they're not going to stop and ask you are you sure you want to do this. So if you're making changes in directly in the database, be very very careful. Make sure you So what would you recommend if you wanted to do cleanup having to do it? There are plugins Yep, yep. Just like you can install, install plugins that will detect vulnerability in other plugins, <laughs> or install plugins that will tell you how can much. You a table okay. uh, not off the top of my head, I don't remember what it's called, but there, I've used I've used one that works very well. I'll, you know, having a, uh, this is a, a, a topic really for speeding up also, but having a bulky database can slow your site down. So, um, like things like when you, when you discard a post or when you have lots and lots and lots of revisions of posts, that can beef up your database, and that's the kind of thing that a database cleanup plugin will take out. All right. So, um, as I said before, so this is, we all have probably seen this, the post the page where we're adding posts. So what I said earlier, this is a web page. This is a form where we're inputting content into a database. Um, so this is how the data gets added to the database, is through the back end, through the form. And this is um, the table for this post. All right. So we've got a post ID. Um, the content is actually here. It goes on if you, and here's our title. So all of the information about this <coughs> is here. All right, this is a table. I just wanted to give an example of a table. This is our WP options table. So it contains um, uh, you know, a lot of the information that you see on um, the site options page in the dashboard. So like your URL, your homepage, your admin email, you know, values declaring whether things can happen. So that's just, you know, an example of what it looks like in the middle to the back end. I mean, the back, back, back end is just going to be a bunch of ones and zeros, but we're not going to get that abstract <laughs> in here. Um, okay, so quick question, what reasons would we have to access the database directly? Um, one instance where I've done this is when I haven't been able to get into a website, but I could get into the database and could then create a username for myself or um, change a password. So if you get locked out of your or uh, locked out of your dashboard, that's where you can go in and update user information. All right. So what can we do, knowing a little bit about? how WordPress works underneath the user interface. We can add widget areas using functions.php. We can change some of the styling of the site and style that CSS. And go in and change your user's password. You can create custom hooks and filters. Maybe not today, maybe a little bit later. You can also delete your entire site in one fell swoop or break stuff. So how do we do this safely? 
Number one, use a child theme. So a couple people have mentioned that. When you install a theme, if you make edits to the actual theme files and then that theme gets updated, all of your changes are going to be deleted. Or if you go in and you make changes to a theme and you break it, your theme is broken. If you use a child theme, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Um, so that's one option. Another one is to duplicate your site and make, run a test version of your site, either locally on your desktop, so you actually do a local installation of WordPress on your own machine so it's not live out on the web and you can mess around with it and then if it works you can transfer it up. Or you can, um, this is what I do, I don't know if it's really the best way to do it, but use a subdomain or a spare domain to just have a test site. All right, go. Go. Child themes. So child themes are themes that depend, that inherit the functionality of a theme that's designated as its parent. So any changes that you make to your child theme, a parent theme's updates will not override them. And it's really the best practice for modifying any existing theme. So what happens is you create a theme folder, and the contents of your folder are a style.css that doesn't have to have anything in it, um, when you first create it, except um, information about the, th the, the header information inside the, the CSS header that declares that this is a child of another theme. Your functions.php, which is the current best practice for loading the parent theme, so someone had mentioned using the NQ process to pull the parent theme into the child theme. If you want your child theme to have a picture on your themes page, you can upload it and call it screenshot.png. And then any other template files that you wish to alter. So say you want to change the header so that things display differently, or um, you have a, a, you know, you're adding a widget area to the header. If you add a new header.php file to your child theme, it will override the parent theme's template file. Functions.php loads along with the parent theme's functions file. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, on one of my sites, I have a parent theme, and then the child theme just has the name. The, the convention is just to call it the name of the theme and then child. <coughs> For the actual file name. It's actually not a subfolder. It goes alongside the theme. It goes in your themes directory. It doesn't go inside the theme. It doesn't go inside the theme. It goes inside the themes folder. Okay. So if you look at it, if you look at your themes folder, you'll see black walnut, black walnut child. They're side by side. Right. So is it like a hyphen, or what's the protocol? I don't think there's actual. I don't think there's actual protocol for that. Um, I th yeah, it's it's just up to you. It won't it won't not work. I mean, I've made child themes that have a completely different name, and they work fine. So it's just a kind of a convention, but it's not necessary. Uh, also, so making test sites, sandbox sites. So developing locally on your machine, Mac users, MAMP, Windows users, WAMP. Everybody can use XAMPP. You're actually loading, um, you're downloading Apache and uh, running a little web server on your local desktop. So it'll run, it'll, um, it'll include the PHP processor, your MySQL database, it'll all be built into that. There are lots of plugins for doing this or um, free resources with step-by-step -step instructions on how to get set up. Um, you can do a fresh install of WordPress or you can play around with duplicating an existing site by using a plugin. Uh, Duplicator is a really popular plugin for just duplicating the site and then reinstalling it in a different location. Or you can duplicate your site um, live using a test account or a subfolder, but know that if you do that, um, unless you take special precautions, people could still get to your test site if they happen to stumble across it. All right. Any questions now? <coughs> yeah. Can you work with GitHub yet? No. Backup, uh, basically, as a way to control your changes in your WordPress directory. No. Have you? 
Um, it's on my list of things to do. Uh -huh. I've kind of gotten proficient with GitHub, um, and I have a couple I have made where we are moving the backup into GitHub repositories so that we have backup copies of the code. Yeah. Just to, to clarify with child theme, some of the uh, uh, files you copy over and some of them you just use blank files and fill in this with it. Um, you don't copy them, it, it, so you would, you would copy over a file that you wanted to make edits to. No, that, that, when you start with style.css, that would be blank. Any changes you make, you would add to it. Um, and then it will, it, when, when the page loads, it'll load your style, your child style sheet first, the parent style sheet second, so it'll cascade through the different style sheets. <coughs> yes. But if you put header.php in your child theme folder, it will load that one in place of the parent theme header file. Shouldn't it load the customization, the style sheet second after so that they override the, the defaults? Right, right. It loads it, I guess, yeah, it depends on whether, wh which way you're thinking when you say first or last. It's the most important. The, the, it's the most important, or the primary, yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you use it's an NQ function that you NQ E N C U U E C U U E Q U. Q U. Thank you. Q. Yeah. NQ function that you put in your functions.php file. Um, if you look at the WordPress codex on child themes, it has that there, and you can just copy it and use it. I'm not sure. Does anyone else know that? Um, it, it, for some reason, the import process is, um, whatever, however the import process works, this works better. Um, and it's just what WordPress says is the best practice at this point. So, yeah. Like I said, I'm kind of middleman when it comes to this to, to coding. So I do a lot of like, okay, we do this because this is what we do. But I don't necessarily get in get down into the. Someday I will, but yeah. What? Not right now. <laughs> Yeah. Was this helpful for people? Like did you did you learn something you didn't already know? Okay. Yeah.